Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is going to be number 10 in my How I Draw Anatomy series, and I'm going to be covering squash and stretch. Squash and stretch is sort of a additional concept to add on top of the other things that I've talked about in this series. It's sort of along the lines of like the line of action and silhouette, things that are meant to be building blocks on top of the foundations that I've already shown you in this series, and it is a concept that I really like and find very fun, so I wanted to share it with you guys. Also, I'm going to be doing the next video in this series on facial expression, and squash and stretch kind of comes into play in facial expressions, so I wanted to show you guys this concept first because it's used in both expressions and in body movement, so I thought I would share it with you guys. So I have some of the old flower sack drawings and some other things that I've shown you guys in previous videos because I've kind of already been showing you squash and stretch, I just didn't tell you that it was squash and stretch at the time. So I'm going to be kind of referencing back to some of these little illustrations that I've done in the previous videos to explain like what squash and stretch is and why it's great and fun and why it's important to kind of fit that into your drawings to give them more drama and dynamic movement. So the main concept of squash and stretch is that all living things or objects, humans, plants, animals, cups, plates, whatever is around objects, have flexibility, elasticity, and that flexibility will react and change shape and form when it's exposed to force or when it moves freely on its own. So to make what I just said make a little bit more sense, I always think about opposites when I'm doing an illustration. Opposites make for more visual interest in your illustration. So one thing, I'm gonna use this guy right here for an example. I'm gonna show you an opposite. This is your stretch right here, and this is your squash. So this little guy right here is definitely more interesting than this guy, which is just your basic I'm just kind of chilling and sitting here kind of pose. There's no squash and stretch, there's no line of action, there's no really anything. This is just your generic, basic, the first thing you draw and you kind of get it out of the way before you move on to have more fun with the flower sack or whatever it is that you're drawing. But these are your opposites. So this will be your stretch and this will be your squash. And this is the basic concept that I'm going to be showing you guys. So these two elements, the squash and the stretch, are your opposites. And they create more visual interest or movement in a drawing. And they definitely do. Just having the body bent here and it stretched out here creates something a lot more interesting to look at than this. So that's the main concept that I'm trying to explain in this video is adding visual interest by using opposite elements in your drawings. Um, I'm going to use this little guy as a demo. Um, so this is a really good example of squash and stretch because here's your stretch and here is your squash. And look at how much dynamic movement just adding that elongated part of the body and squishing down another one of it brings to the figure. So if I were to take this flower sack and turn it into a human doing this same pose, I would just go in and I would kind of keep, remember the line of action? I'm, this is my line of action right here. So I would just go in and just sketch out and you can just add whatever you want to this. So I took this little dude and drew him as a human person and I used the stretch and I kind of elongated the entire body and this would be my line of action by the way all the way down to the foot which I didn't draw because no one cares but um, just having the opposites of the stretch and the squash really make this pose feel more dynamic even though it's just a little doodle 
just putting in the like the bend in the body and kind of compressing everything on this side and stretching everything out on this side makes this pose more dynamic and interesting to look at. And the squash and stretch doesn't necessarily have to be the entire form, it can be just like a little piece of the body. Like one of my favorite things to do is just add this little bend in the torso right here. Normally I would actually do something similar to this but add like a fold because I like like the skin to have a bit of like <laughs> I guess chub to it or whatever you want to call it. Um, I like like the way that looks. And so this would be my squash right here and my stretches here. You can add it in the shoulders and the legs and the arms. Um, the way the arms stretch and compress can show squash and stretch. It just is a basic way to show, as I've said like 10 times already, just movement and visual interest in your illustrations rather than just having a static pose like this. You could just take this. I'm gonna make it a flower sack still. <laughs> and I'll take basically this same pose, but add some squash and stretch to it. So your squash is here and your stretch is here just to kind of pull it out a little bit and make it look a little bit more visually interesting. And as I said, you can use the squash and stretch to show emotion in your drawing. So I'm gonna do a little doodle right here of an angry human who is angry. Look at him. So this simple little pose right here is very compressed. So this would be your squash. And the entire form can be squashed. It doesn't have to just be squash and stretch. It can just be squashed. And then if I wanted to take this to the next level, if I was animating this for instance, <laughs> like this could be the same human person, whatever, <laughs> and this would be your stretch. So this could be, a, like squashing and compressing the form is a way to show like you're upset or you're angry or you're tired and stretching out a pose can show, hey, I'm surprised or interested or active, something like that. So I'm gonna bring out these that I've shown in a previous video as well and I'm gonna add some squash and stretch to some of these forms as the final demo um, because I drew these back when I was in school and this was long before I learned about what squash and stretch was, but I see forms in here that could definitely use a little bit of squash and stretch. So I'm just gonna do a couple quick demos showing you some squash and stretch. I don't know if I explained this very well. The concept is kind of inane, sort of like the line of action and the silhouette, which I've shown in previous videos. But once you understand the concept of it and what it's for, it's not too difficult to kind of put it into practice and add it to your own artwork or animation or whatever it is that you're working on. So in this one, I took this old illustration I did and added squash and stretch in two places. So I squashed the stomach and extended the back. I also pushed up the shoulder and extended wee, the additional arm, which kind of gave this pose a little bit more visual interest and made it feel more three-dimensional and like it kind of was moving, even though it's a stationary pose. It just put a little bit more weight on this shoulder by bringing the shoulder up as opposed to having it down like it is in this little illustration. So that's another way that you can use squash and stretch is to add weight. Adding weight is really important because it helps your drawings to look more realistic. All right guys, so that is it for squash and stretch. I, and as I said, I'm going to be doing facial expressions next. I wasn't originally planning on including that in this series, but I had a lot of requests for it in the last video, so I guess I will include that too. Um, feel free as usual to leave me suggestions for 
more videos you'd like to see in this series and I will see what I can do um, and if you do any of this squash and stretch practice you can tag me over on my social media and I can look at it if any of you guys out there did that like 50 flower sack assignment homework thing that I did for the flower sack video turn the flower sacks into people and use squash and stretch and show it to me I want to see what you guys can do with that because I got a lot of I got tagged a lot in people's flower sack drawings and it's really fun to see them. So you can do that if you feel like it. Um, yeah, so I will have the next video up in a couple weeks and feel free to subscribe if you're new and all that jazz. And don't forget to click that little bell icon to be notified when I post new videos because YouTube is a, a pain in the butt and doesn't always tell people when I post videos, which is annoying. So feel free to click that bell icon and be notified when I post new videos. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next week for another video. Bye!